So good morning, good afternoon. This is the Global Watch International. It is the 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. And we want to welcome you to the fabulous UK Watch, this very um, active group. And we are going to be introducing you to Barry and Brenda. And we just speak blessing over all of you and blessing as you lead this watch, as you inspire us with things that the Lord has revealed to you and spoken to you about to encourage us in our walk as well. So over to you, Barry and Brenda. God bless you. Thanks. I mean, we always emphasize it's a team, it's Team UK that we call ourselves, and uh, so it's very much a team uh, effort, and we're so grateful um, that um, we have people who are prepared to obviously um, come into these Global Watch times to obviously lead in different aspects. So let's first of all just protect the time. We know how the enemy wants to disrupt. So Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our King Yeshua, we ask you now to release your warrior angels and your heavenly host. And we decree and declare that they would remove each one of us on this call from anything, our technology or any other issue, from the enemy's radar and scramble the enemy's airwaves and frequencies because your kingdom must come now and your will must be done right now in the heavens and also on the earth in jesus name amen so well welcome thank you thank you so much for joining us um uh aim is very kindly going to put up the first um song and i felt the lord was saying that um for a time as this the ecclesia really need to be so um aligned and uh, just thinking on psalm 24 from the amplified translation it shows obviously verse 3 who shall go up to the mountain of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted himself up to falsehood or to what is false, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. So I think this is really the theme of we've um, we need as the um, ecclesia, the ecclesia, however we want to pronounce it, um, to have those clean hands for the Lord to to use um, His body in such a time as this. So um, we go into this, and really it's a, a plea to the Lord. Um, here's my heart, um, and uh, we want to hear from the Lord what um, He wants to say to each one of us. So thanks, um, Amy. Bless you. Thank you, Amy, for facilitating that. So uh, really on to the word of God, which is always uh, important. So um, over to Joe and then Jonathan. Right. Good afternoon. And this is Proverbs 11.11. 11. I'm going to read it in two versions, the Amplified first and then the Passion Translation. Um, it, Proverbs 11.11. 11. By the blessing of the influence of the upright and God's favor because of them, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. In the Passion Translation, it says, the blessing of favor resting upon the righteous influences a city to lift it higher, but wicked leaders tear it apart by their words. And then the second scripture is Isaiah 22, 22 in the New King James Version. And it says, the key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder, so he shall open and no one shall shut, and he shall shut and no one shall open. Okay. Thank you, Joe. So, Jonathan, uh, to you. Um... Okay, on yet. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, verses 25 to 32 from the Amplified Bible. Therefore, rejecting all falsehood, whether that's lying, defrauding, telling half truths, spreading rumors, speak truth, each one with his neighbor. For we are all parts of one another, and we are all parts of the body of Christ. Be angry at sin, that is immorality, injustice, ungodly behaviour. 
yet do not sin, are you? nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. And do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding on to a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. The thief who has now become a believer must no longer steal, but he must work hard to make an honest living, producing that which is good with his own hands so that he will have something to share with those in need. Do not, well, do not let unwholesome, that is foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words, ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good for building up others according to the need and the occasion, so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please him. Because by the Holy Spirit, you were sealed and marked, branded as God's own for the day of redemption. That's the final deliverance from the consequences of sin. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour, that's perpetual animosity, resentment, strife, false fighting, fault finding and slander, let them all be put away from you, along with every kind of malice, that is all spitefulness, verbal abuse and malevolence. Be kind and helpful to one another, tender hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. Mm. Amen to that. So thank you. Thank you both for those readings. Um, right, Suzanne, really into your capable hands as usual. Bless you, Barry. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Barry and Brenda, just for inviting me really to be part of this again today. And thank you. I also wanted actually to thank David Tidy for what he shared last time because and he's on this call because uh, he shared around the theme and I hope I've got this right, David, God is not looking for a spirit of unity in the church, but a unity of spirit. Is that right? And I want to say, I believe today that God isn't looking for a church which is shaped by the world. And we know this, um, but a church that will shape the world. That actually in this day, we are meant to be the history makers. You know, and um, everything that I am talking about today, I would like to say I have walked. You know, it's it's my story in one one aspect, but I believe that it's a story for uh, the church in this hour. And we are called those two scriptures that we read, you know, one more detailed than the other. But we are called we know this to be the light in a dark world. We're called to feed the hungry, you know, the Isaiah 61 call. Um, and I do, we know that God is also calling his church um, to a greater level of authority. That we can rule from the heavenly realm. And we know that Isaiah 22, 22, we had that. But, you know, Jesus picked up this theme in Matthew 16, 19, when he's talking about the birth of the ecclesia his church he says i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and jesus intended his church to be governmental and the ecclesias of his day we know were governmental in a practical arena. And I do believe that there is an aspect of what God is releasing in our day is a fresh authority to actually pray for governments and to release governmental decrees. But he also wants all of us to rule and reign and to govern in the spiritual realm um, and to be able to take that place of being seated above the heaven above the principalities and powers and there'll always be those who will be too young or too immature to take that place but nevertheless there is a fresh call for the church to go higher and 
I do, you know, against the background of everything that is going on, I believe that God is uh, giving us, his church, the opportunity to be the change agents in our worlds. And we know that or we wouldn't be here. And it's God is raising up people in lots of different arenas. So we see in the Old Testament, God raised up specific individuals with very powerful gifts or anointings to deliver his people. So we have Moses, we have Joseph, we have Daniel, you know, we have Elijah and, and David and many others. But today, God isn't just looking for the ones and the twos. He's looking for his church to step up into those places. But all of those individuals went through a process of the dealings of God in their lives. You know, they they walked through the wilderness in one way or another. And it was that process and that wilderness experience that actually brought them out into a different level of availability to God. And uh, it was interesting, just two days ago, uh, on my YouTube, I got this little clip of Catherine Coleman, which popped up, you know, and she was actually saying, anyone can have the anointing that I have if they're willing to pay the price. And I believe that God has his whole church on a journey and bringing us through, hopefully to the uh, end place of that journey right now where it is a journey into a fresh level of anointing, a fresh ability to carry his glory. It's a journey where he is also preparing us, his people, to carry a, a higher level of authority and to move in a higher level of righteousness and to understand justice in a way that we've not done in the past. And I think sometimes we know those things and we we want to do what God has called us to do. But we start in the wrong place or we look in the wrong place. And so many now are going through challenges, you know, in their walk with God and God, you know, it's basically will I persist? Am I going to keep going? Am I going to press into God or am I just going to allow the circumstances and the situations and the defeat to take me out? And God is putting his finger for many people on things that we uh, haven't done well in the past that we need to repent of or issues in our lives that he he is cleansing us of. And it's because he is preparing us for a different season. And I've often said this, and maybe I'm not on this call, but who we were in the last season is not sufficient for the season ahead and for who he wants us to be in the season ahead. And a very simple scripture, Proverbs 16, 32 says, uh, and some of you will know this, do you want to conquer or influence a city? Then rule over your temper before you attempt to rule a city. And uh, my pastor is the Reverend Betty King, and she teaches a huge amount on the fact that character is more important than gift. And I'm very aware that some of what I'm saying will probably come from her. But that scripture is basically saying people cannot govern something in the world, cannot govern in the spiritual realm, unless we can first govern our own emotions, our own actions, our own behavior. And some of what we read, Jonathan read in particular, it was quite detailed and uh, and so forth. But if we are honest with ourselves, which we'll come to in a moment, some of those things we need to look at and say, maybe I need to own some of this. We cannot release into the world around us what we are not. And the authority of the church as the ecclesia is weakened unless and until we deal with the things that hinder our individual authority. And uh, character also sustains us in what God has called us to do. And so where do we begin and what really do I want to focus on today? And I just believe that there is such a, a, an emphasis of the spirit of this high call and of what he wants us to be and to do in the days ahead. 
but there is also an emphasis of the spirit to become those who are pure in heart in whatever that looks like for each one of us. And if we read the journey of Jesus himself in Philippians 2, and just uh, around the verses 6 to 10, it says that, you know, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient even to death on the cross. But that passage is preceded by the statement actually in verse 5, and I'm just going to use the Passion Translation, but it simply says, and consider the example Jesus, the anointed one. Consider the example Jesus, the anointed one has set before us and let his mindset become your motivation. And that mindset was about humility and it was about obedience to the spirit of God. And the kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness. And we cannot, you know, release, as I said before, into the world what we are not. And we had that scripture through, and another version says, through the blessing of the righteous, the city is, is uplifted or, or, or something like that. And we have to acknowledge before God that our righteousness as the people of God, as his people, has not uplifted, has not changed or influenced our towns and our cities in many places. And so what is the answer? Well, part of the answer, and it's many facets, but part of the answer, I believe, is that God is saying that he is requiring of his people a higher level of righteousness. And the apostles, as well as Jesus, called the church to a high place. And so that Ephesians 4 scripture talked about you know, it talks about the, the things that we like to think are far from us, you know, the, the sexual sexual issues and, the, you know, the obvious sin. But it also talks about selfishness. It talks about pride. It talks about conceit. It talks about jealousy. You know, it talks about uh, strife and arrogance and all of those things. And if we are totally honest with ourselves, the church carries those things. And we carry them. And God is saying no longer. And he's rooting them out of his people if we will allow him. And I remember just visiting a church a while ago, it was a, a church actually that I'd, been, I'd actually run for a short time. But I went there and I talked about, you know, the fact that you get people and I'm, you know, please, this is just a side example. But we know that they come into a church and in a previous church, they had a specific role. Maybe, and it's a, an easy example to look at, maybe they were a worship leader. So they come into their new church and they feel entitled to a role as the worship leader. And those are the things that God is rooting out and saying, actually, no longer. You know, I'm looking for my church to walk in a fresh level of righteousness and obedience and surrender to me in this day. And on another level, it is those things of um, entitlement, of selfishness, of jealousy and so on that so often break our agreement and therefore our authority in the place of prayer. And it takes humility to say to God, you know, not to each other, actually, Lord, I need you to sort some of these things out. I am forgiven. I am. Yes, there is grace. But I still have some thought happens, some some thought habits, some patterns, some emotions that actually I believe that you want to rid me off at this time. You know, if we talk about the kingdom as a you know kingdom of righteousness, it's also a kingdom of justice. And we make judgments, you know, about each other often, but we make judgments about people and uh, historically perhaps and again in the news so often these days on color or background or race sometimes it's about what people are wearing or their clothes or you know we look at them and we make a judgment oh they're obviously wealthy or they're obviously not they obviously have some sort of need need we make judgments about nations according to the news but Isaiah 11 says the Messiah will not judge by what his eyes see nor make decisions by what his ears hear but with righteousness and justice, God's righteousness and God's justice, he will judge the poor. 
And we cannot, if we cannot look at each other without making judgments, you know, many of them wrong, how are we going to be those who make good judgments in the place of prayer? And how are we going to rule nations? And I think that, you know, as intercessors, it's very easy that we pray to think that we pray for others and we pray for them to step into their anointing, though the Daniels and the Josephs to rise up. We pray that they will be single minded, that they will walk the walk, that they will be pure. And there's nothing wrong in that. But for the ecclesia, God wants us to carry a different level of authority and the authority of the kingdom through the ecclesia comes out through the mouth and it comes out through declaration and decree. And the kingdom is within us. And so God given revelation and decree comes from within us through our mouths. We catch hold of what God is saying and we speak it out. But James 3.10 says out of the mouth comes blessing and cursing. And this should not be. Jesus said in Luke 6, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And Matthew 11, uh, 12, I think it is, verse 34. Out of the abundance of our hearts, the mouth speaks. So if our hearts are fearful, that will affect what we say and our declaration will be limited because our faith will be limited. If our hearts are bitter, that will also affect or limit or taint what comes out in terms of our prayer or specifically our declaration or decree. And so I believe that in this time, there is a call on the whole church to carry this higher level of uh, anointing and the glory of God. And for everyone, that is about our hearts being pure before the God, before God. But for the ecclesia, I believe the call for purity is very high. And so, as I say, you know, some of this God has had me on a journey on for a while or a journey with. But we need to be careful. And I found this, and this is a little bit of a testimony, that the standard we use to judge our own hearts is God's standard and the standard of his word. And actually not what we hear or see others doing, even if we think that they are people that, you know, are uh, carry great authority in the kingdom or if they're people we respect. We need to be those who go back to the spirit of God, back to the word of God and say, Lord, am I walking with purity in the way that you want me to walk? And so today, and as a couple of people going to pray or declare in a moment, but I want us to pray for the church and for the ecclesia that we will be those who are emotionally healed, that we will be pure in heart, that we will be humble, you know, in spirit, that we can walk in obedience to the spirit of God and that we can put down our own preferences and our own will and do what God asks us to do. And I think if there was just one scripture that I would use to finish, I think it's Matthew 5. And it's that the pure in heart will see God. And therefore, they will see the pure in heart and they will know his purposes because they will be the ones who see him. Mm. Amen. Thank um, you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. So, yeah, with that in mind, as. um uh, we go into that time of prayer. We will um, obviously join in together in breakout rooms, which I think is um, really beneficial, taking these points mm -hmm. that Suzanne's raised. But um, I'd just like to ask David now to um, lead, following on from that, this um, time of prayer together. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, that word, pure in heart, is key when it comes to opening and shutting doors. As we read from Revelation 3 and verse 7 through, and he says to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, he who is holy, he who is true, who has the key of David, Amen. 
who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one opens, says this, I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door, which no one can shut. And because you have a little power and have kept my word and have not denied my name, Behold, I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews that are not, but lie. I will make them come and bow down at your feet and make them know that I have loved you because you have kept the word of my perseverance, which is about to come. I'm sorry. I also will keep you from the hour of testing that hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. So, Father, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us that authority to address the things that need to be addressed, to be able to speak out what is of you, but as watchmen also to warn those things which are not of you. So Lord, we do ask you, if you would, in the, in the beauty of your holiness, in the beauty of your righteousness, with the depth of your grace and the depth of your friendship, Lord, help us to be able to say the right thing at the right time and to do the right thing at the right time. And that be done according to you, Lord, and you holding up the plumb line with regards to your word and the way that you would have it implemented here on earth through your ecclesia. So, Father, we pray that somehow you would do a work in addressing, Lord, the unbelief that's even in the church regarding some of the things that you call us to do, even into the spiritual warfare, that so many back off because they don't see it as it should be. And Father, we see the religious spirit behind that. So we are asking of you in the generosity of your giving from the Holy Spirit, you said, Holy Spirit, that you would lead us into all truth. So would you break down the lies and the deceptions that we don't need to fight? People keep telling me, Lord, you, it, it's your battle. But in the covenant, Lord, your battle is our battle and our battle is your battle. And the Lord, we want to stand firmly with the battle over your word, even right now, that's being challenged in so many different ways. So we want you, Lord, we want to close the door with that authority that you give to us firmly, to shut it firmly against false doctrines and false prophecies, etc. that sort of hinder the people, the ecclesia, from coming in to the full authority that you would have them have. And Lord, we would ask that somehow the holiness, the purity that is in your body would be seen, Lord, more clearly than anything else. So Lord, as we press on, with that prophetic understanding of what you're doing and what you're saying today, as you're shaking everything that can be shaken, as you're opening doors that need to be opening, and you're shutting the doors, Lord, on how things were in the past in preparation for a prophetic action born out of the leading of your holy and life giving spirit for your ecclesia to rise up and take its authority as you would have it have, but not just for the nations that they live, but also in that prayer action against the stuff like the New World Order 
and the World Economic Forum and the WHO and all their demands, Lord, as it were, and their, their implication to reduce population. Father, we want to shut the door on that. And we want to have the divine order of seeing people saved and come into the reality of what it is to be part of the body of Christ, to be able to live and walk in that depth of friendship that you would have them have. So would you, would you, in the generosity and the ability of the way that you do things, open, <clears throat> open up the door for the harvest, Lord, to come in in these end times. Would you, Lord, through your spirit, as we declare these things, shut the door on the fears of the future. Lord, even the fears of failure, even the fears of not being good enough, Lord, within your body. And Lord, would you open, open up the areas of faith for each one, Lord, so that they can be assured of your commitment to each one and be able to trust you in your faithfulness, even when we are maybe not so faithful. You are always faithful. Lord, minister accordingly into your body and fulfill your desire for your body right now. So we would, Lord, in the name of Jesus, just stand against every bit of deception that has crept in to weaken your body. Lord, we just declare today, those deceiving spirits will be exposed and the body will be strengthened. It will be what you'd have it be, pure and holy and living in the authority that you have given it according to your scriptures. The authority to close doors and the ability and authority to open doors that need to be opened. So we just say thank you, Lord, for your call in this season to enter into even more so of your righteousness, your truth, your life, your holiness, your purity, may it truly manifest. And may, Lord, not only your people see it, but the people of the world see you active through your body here on the earth. May it be so. In Yeshua's name, Father, we ask you, and we believe, Lord, that you answer because you are faithful in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Mm, thank you. Thank you, David. Well, it's a declaration, isn't it? We need to be continually declaring the Lord's word over these things. And um, as written in, in Job 22, 28, uh, which says, you will declare a thing and it will be established. So as we take that with confidence and in the season of government shift, we want to decree and declare God's people across these lands represented on the core today will rise up to the fullness of who he has made them to be. And we declare the ecclesia will arise and the reformers take their places in every sphere and region of our lands. And according to his word in Hebrews 10:1. The law is only a shadow of the good things which are coming, not the realities themselves. We decree and we declare that as his people are increasingly positioned, empowered and released, that which we have seen in the past season of kingdom influence is only a shadow of what will be seen in the days ahead across our lands. And we declare the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, will be established over his people. His words will be our words and his will, our will. That his plans for peace, for mercy and hope 
will be increasingly established in our nations. And we declare history is made by the people of God. And as we move into this new season, we declare God's people will walk in divine dominion, ruling over their emotions, thoughts, and words. We declare in every circumstance, they will flourish under every pressure. They will be courageous. And in every victory, they will honor God. Amen. <clears throat> So let's um, let's continue, and um, I think um, let's 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 actually pray that in in alignment with that. I just want to very quickly just um, bring Ephesians six ten to eighteen from the Message translation, which I think is so pertinent in this time, and it's headed up a fight to the finish, and that about wraps it up. God is strong, and He wants you to be strong. So take everything the Master has set out for you, well made weapons of the best materials and put them to use so that you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. So be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. But God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and your sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Amen. So um, <laughs> over to you, um, Suzanne. Thank you so much, Barry. I just wanted to pray something very short, really. It's a de well, it's a declaration, really. But Lord, right now, from this place, we declare... And we decree that God's people will not pray from the visible alone, but or from the place of our own understanding, but from the revelation given from heaven. And we declare that we will step into the governmental authority that you are releasing upon the ecclesia. We decree that as uh, your people, Lord, walk in agreement in heart and vision and purpose under the Lordship of Jesus, we will be as one and we will be empowered to release and to steward every new thing that you are doing. We declare these are the days of the government of the kingdom on earth that that order and administration is and will be established in our nations and in the British Isles, particularly as this is the UK watch in the days ahead. We thank you, Lord, for the process that you have uh, your people going through. And Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you are raising not just the one, not just the two, but Lord, you are raising many to walk in authority and to walk in anointing and in your glory. And Lord, we just thank you that there is no limitation over how you will use your church in the days ahead. Except that which we put upon ourselves. And so, Lord, we root out, as has already been prayed by David, all the the uh, the unbelief. We root out fear, we root out intimidation, and we release courage and boldness upon your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, we all say amen to that. So um, I think now would be good to have um, time. Obviously, we're conscious of, particularly with the um, the daily briefing following immediately that uh, we go into breakout rooms and just pray that into each of our own situations and uh, in our own national situations as well. So if you could um, 
take us into that, um, Amy, that would be um, good. Okay, I'll be opening the breakout rooms. If there's a way that you could publish that declaration, uh, Barry and Suzanne, up on the main signal uh, app, that would be great. Those are perfect. So here we go. Well, let's go ahead and pray because we only have a few minutes before we'll be heading back. Let me see. Out room. So, what, sure. so what was the topic? Uh, we, we are praying those declarations about the Lord raising up the church, being established with, uh, without fear, God refining us, our personal lives, uh, you know, things that, that we're related to. So I'm just yeah. checking. I'm Go ahead and lead out in prayer. Hi, Sally. Um, go ahead and lead in prayer. Yes, Lord. Lord, we want to join the prayers of the others. We want to agree with them. <laughs> Just, um, yeah, saying your will be done as it in heaven as it is on earth. For Israel and for the nations, God, we really want to see um, your miracles happening amongst our brothers and sisters in Israel. And... We ask you to make them bold and courageous and give them wisdom. God, we ask you to, that they are, we want to pray over them this day. Don't have a spirit of fear, but a spirit of, um, um, yeah, that they are patient and can wait for, on your word and not doing things out of fear or pressure from others, God. Mm -hmm. We want to bless. Um, we're, all, we're all back obedient yeah, to God. the timing uh, so, <laughs> so, but, but, oh god um, bless you guys i thought well, i hope, hope everyone found the um, breakout time uh, albeit um, always too short but uh, yeah so we um we really sort of appreciate everybody participating today and uh, um, the team i we want to thank you brenda and i thank each of the team of the uk watch for uh, your willingness to um, uh, support and we honour each one of you. So um, we now are sort of approaching very rapidly the time to jump into the daily briefing of um, uh, the Lord's beloved land of uh, Israel. So so we uh, pass over to you really, um, uh, Fred and Susan. So uh, in your hands, we all are. Okay. Uh, are you recording? We're going to stop that recording. <clears throat>